Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Matt here. Uh, first, I want to start by just apologizing. It's been uh, some time since I posted a video and I really haven't been around uh, Discord as much as I would like. Uh, as several of you have known, I've moved uh, multiple times over the last uh, few months to include uh, my last move, which was 8,000 miles from where I started. So I've uh, been exceedingly busy. However, in my uh, spare time, which is few and far between lately, still working very, very diligently on the next iteration of FSFO, uh, which I'm referring to as FSFO version five. I think I'm at a point now where I wanna showcase some of the, the new features and just kind of give you an update. Uh, however, with that in mind, uh, there's still lots to do. Uh, so we're gonna run into some errors along the way. For example, I know there are some sounds missing. Um, I have to re-record all the, the sounds. Uh, FSFO started you know, back in 2011 and uh, some of the naming configurations for the sound files just didn't make any sense. So I'm taking this opportunity to rename them. Also, I was uh, carrying a bunch of sound files for that you know, just weren't used any longer. So uh, again, taking this opportunity to clean that all up. So uh, we'll be missing some sounds and we'll probably also run into some other errors along the route. But uh, rest assured, still working very diligently um, and I uh, hope to get this out. Okay, let's just, uh, again, this will be a somewhat of a shorter video. We're just gonna go over some key features and some key differences, just so you get an idea of where I'm at. Uh, one of the biggest key features right off the bat is um, uh, FSFO now gives the option to use the Microsoft SAPI uh, voice engine. The reason why uh, several users asked for this, it makes a lot of sense if you're using an ATC that is also using a SAPI engine, uh, using this kind of aperture, you can then marry your FSFO copilot with your, let's say, Box ATC copilot. So it's the same voice. It just helps with that immersion. So you can uh, go ahead and set your uh, your SAPI to whatever uh, you have loaded uh, within here. So that's a, a new feature on FSFO. Uh, joystick options uh, have been uh, increased. You can now minimize uh, using a button. Other than that, they're all relatively the same, except now you can actually set any of these with the keyboard command too. So I know we had some problems in the in the past with certain joysticks not being recognized. Should all be resolved, uh, rewrote this entire method. So um, hopefully that uh, that fixes a lot. For example, the Gladiator, I know several users uh, didn't get that to work, but should be cleared up in version five. Another big key is career mode, and we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, a little bit here. Uh, what that is is basically you can simulate your own company now with uh, with FSFO, and uh, I'll show that here uh, in coming up. Verbose is also a new feature. Uh, what this does is when you're going through their flows, uh, first of all, a flow is normally uh, something that a pilot does without coordination with the other pilot. They are uh, based on memories um, and certain actions during a specific uh, phases of flight that each pilot knows they have to do. There's no coordination between them. However, we have several uh, several vision impaired pilots that rely on FSFO to uh, to conduct their flight. So I uh, have a commitment to them. I want to make sure that they're able to use FSFO uh, to fly the PMDG 737 and whatever other aircraft I can support. So that's why this is here. So when we go through the flow, you will hear FSFO announce what it is, what system he's manipulating uh, or she's manipulating uh, as we go out through the flow. Um, so that's a key option here. Another big thing I, I wanted to highlight is um, there is no longer a difference between a button mode and voice mode. So for example, if you have set flaps enabled, it doesn't matter if voice is on or voice is off, FSFO will manipulate your flaps. Um, if you don't want them to manipulate your flaps, and obviously I have that turned off because I like to do that via my voice command. Same with landing gear. So no more difference between uh, button mode and voice mode. These these uh, features work when you have them on or they don't work. It's it's really that, uh, that simple. Okay, uh, in the advanced mode now, uh, if you're using the auto flow option, I've added some uh, options to enable you to set delays for example, you see the shutdown flow delay set to five seconds. So uh, the co-pilot would not start his shutdown flow until five seconds after the brakes are set. You can set that to whatever you want. Uh, that goes for all of these. It's just there to provide you with a, a little more control over uh, when the flow auto flow starts and, and stops. All right, the next big uh, feature is now the ability to go ahead and manipulate your flows and checklist. 
I know several of you uh, wanted, for example, to mimic Ryan Air operations with the 737. So you wanted to do something different than what was provided uh, with the uh, with the FSFO and its default profile. Well, you can do that now. So if you go to select your aircraft, you select what phrase of flight, uh, this is what's already loaded. And then you can go ahead, for example, obviously you wouldn't do this, but if you wanted to set your anti-collision lights, uh, you'll get a description of what this is down here. Anti-collision lights, zero is off, one is on. Uh, you, this is gonna be first officer. And then you would just set your value. So zero, one, I want them on. And then you would just add it. And now you have your anti-collision lights as part of your pre-flight flow. And then you can go ahead and put that wherever you want it within the, uh, within the, within the flow. Uh, obviously, I don't want any, any, uh, any uh, collision lights on during the pre-flight flow, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove it out. So there are several systems uh, here. And again, all you have to do is click on it, and it will tell you exactly what it is and what the value available values uh, are, are there for you. So if there's a system missing or something you would like, let me know. It's super easy to add. Uh, again, this is to provide maximum flexibility, so you can create flows or you can create checklists that mimic your whatever virtual airline it is that you want to you want to fly. Uh, so this was a, a, a heavy lift and something that several people asked for and, and glad to do it. All right, so the next uh, major feature is now the, um, the simulated uh, uh, career mode, if you will, within FSFO. Again, uh, what I tried to do here was strike the balance. I wanted to give a, a meaningful uh, career option without it being uh, too narrow or too restrictive. For example, there are several several great um, uh, simulated career programs out there. Uh, one, uh, I, you know, is it's a great program, but if if you don't get hired for the company <laughs> that has the aircraft that you want to fly or that you have, it can be somewhat restrictive. So I tried to find the best uh, of all of them and and kind of implement it within here to give you. Um, realism but also give you flexibility so as you can see here i created a company called uh, delta airlines uh it was created uh, just uh yesterday uh, but i'm already 58 million dollars in the hole how did i get 58 million dollars in a hole well i purchased an aircraft um the one i'm in right now then i moved the, the aircraft to its location then i sold the aircraft just to make sure it worked again then i rebought the aircraft then I had to reposition it, then I sold it again, then I bought it again, and then repositioned it again. And that's how I got to uh, negative $58. Uh, to buy an aircraft, it's uh, it's super easy. You just, uh, well, first you have to connect FSFO. So let's go ahead and connect. Do this, does the system checks, and there we go, we're good. Uh, we will reload the screen, go to aircraft. All you have to do is then is uh, see the tail number shows up. Go down uh, if you want a new one or I want an older one because they're cheaper, 47 million. Then click the buy button. And I already own this aircraft. So obviously I I uh, can't buy the same aircraft twice or or you shouldn't. Uh, and then it will show up over down here in your current aircraft. Uh, so some of the options that are available is a uh, must own your aircraft, right? So in the career mode, uh, in order to fly within the aircraft that you are in, obviously you have to own it. If you don't own it, you have to buy it. You can go into debt, but there's a, a limit to which you can go to. Um, and then where you just can't take out any more loans and it's all tied to that that reputation. Auto record flights is uh, just let it sound. So if you happen to crash your aircraft, uh, you're gonna take the, the, you know, the, the million dollar hit of losing, millions of dollar hit of losing the aircraft as well as a substantial reputation damage and that's auto recorded. Uh, same when you land a good flight, it will all automatically be auto recorded. Uh, all er aircraft earning income, what that is, it's a multiplier at the end of this flight. What happens is um, FSFO is going to assume that this aircraft is going to fly multiple flights during that day, even though you as the simulated pilot may only have uh, an opportunity to fly once. It's going to add a multiplier, assuming this aircraft is going to fly uh, multiple times. A company can fail again if your reputation falls below a certain point, you lose so much money, you crash your aircraft. Uh, this company will automatically be deleted. Uh, or excuse me, we'll enter into the chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy and you will have to start again. Random failures, uh, much like those of you who have uh, used FS passengers, uh, random failure, engine outage, uh, or you may, it may be something mundane, like you're, uh, you might not be able to use, uh, let's say, um, uh, auto throttle. So you have to control throttle yourself. So just those random failures. What's not included are bird strikes. And I'm open to suggestions. 
Uh, that was actually one feature I did not like in FS Passenger. Uh, you know, I had a finite amount of time where I could fly and flying with a virtual airline, got it all set up, and then I had a bird strike. And it's, they seem to happen a lot and had to defer to an aircraft or an alternate airport. Obviously, my virtual airline didn't give me credit for it. So um, I tried to keep that out of there again. I, I know your time is valuable, so but can add it in if, if so, if so be. Uh, include maintenance costs at the end. You'll get an itemized list of um, uh, how much revenue the, uh, the the flight made. Of course, that's all predicated on the um, the prices that you set here. Uh, please be careful if you go far right. And, uh, you know, you have max values of your tickets. Just know that you will lose uh, some of your market share as your customers choose to go to lower cost airlines. Now, if you're all the way to the right and you have a higher, higher reputation, uh, they are more apt to pay those prices based on the services. So speaking of cost, those are all predicated here. They're all from AirNav. Uh, you see uh, a gallon of uh, jet fuel costs or a pound of jet fuel costs you $6.72. Your landing fee is three dollars and ninety nine cents per one thousand pound, and then your airport service fee. So uh, think uh, catering, think uh, cleaning out your your lavatories, uh, fresh water, those types of things for the aircraft. Seven dollars and forty nine cents per one thousand pounds. Uh, you also have insurance on your aircraft, and you have to pay your crew too. So those are all the the maintenance costs. Start from uh, last uh, airport. As you can see, this aircraft right here, this tail number is currently at Bangor, which is where we're at. Again, I paid $14,000, uh, a little over $14,000 to reposition this aircraft to this location so it's here and ready for me. Uh, if you have this option set and the aircraft is not at this location, then um, you have to move it there and it will cost money if this option is enabled. As you can see, this is the schedule that has been generated. Uh, I generated this using this option down here. You can see I actually have a Delta, a Delta flight schedule. Now the schedules are, are by purpose, super easy. So if you want to make your own schedule, or if you wanted to download a real life schedule, you can do that here. I'm going to pull it up for you too, just so you can see uh, how easy it is. This is Delta's world schedule. It's just the, the flight number from to, and then the miles. So I pulled this, uh, this is the current uh, real life Delta schedule that I just, you know, it's a simple text file. That's all you got to do. However, when you create your company, FSFO will generate you a schedule based on your country code that you enter. So here you can see the country code is US. This is going to be uh, US airports that the schedule is uh, is based upon. Again, you'll have um, if you fly uh, from an airport to an airport, then it will also have a flight out of that airport. So you won't get stuck at that destination. Uh, you can you can make up your own schedules. You can add the schedules. Again, the purpose is maximum uh, flexibility for you. So you do not have to fly a scheduled flight. You can fly from uh, from anywhere as long as the uh, you know the aircraft is at that location. If you have that aforementioned option selected, however, uh, they will not be removed from the schedule until you actually fly. In this case, from Bangor to Buffalo, uh, and then that. So again, maximum fle flexibility. If you want to fly the schedule, or if you get home one night and you just you know, between work and, and feeding the kids and you get just got time for a quick flight, you can do it, still get make money for it for the company. You may have to reposition that aircraft, though. Remember, uh, if you have that option that you have to fly from your last airport. But that's a company. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, just sell this aircraft again, um, just so you can see. And you can sell an aircraft simply by uh, double clicking it. And then uh, there you go. So now if we come back in the company, you can see I'm only $38 million in the hole as I just got credited for an aircraft sold um, and we'll buy that aircraft back here. I just did that to show you. So that is the company uh, in the nutshell. Uh, of course, the logs are, are, are a lot better now too. There'll be search option here for you. Uh, keeps your average rating, your average landing. Um, so here you go for the log. All right, so that is all I kind of want to show you for there as far as options. Again, this is a, a quick um, demonstration. Uh, what we'll do now is uh, let's go ahead and, and just run through a flow uh, just so you can see the verbose and um, and just see how FSFO is progressing. Again, uh, don't pay too much attention to the sounds. Those all got to be redone. So let's go ahead and go to the flow. Please upload a flight plan via the plan screen. Okay, there you go. So that's a new uh, requirement for FSFO. You now have to uh, 
download or a flight plan or enter a flight plan, you can do so manually, or you can go ahead and import a uh, just a regular uh, plan folder that you would have downloaded from SimBrief or PFPX. But I've generated a SimBrief flight plan. And oh, by the way, FSFO will do this automatically for you. Um, uh, when you um, start it, I had that option turned off because I wanted you to uh, experience the uh, um, the experience that uh, warning that you have to upload a flight plan. So I am just going to go ahead and put this down here because I know that's what it's going to be. So there we go. And everything else looks right. Uh, so let's try it again. All right. So remember, we sold this aircraft and I am in career mode. So now saying you do not own aircraft and the tail number. And then it wants me to go back to the screen. I just... Message from company reads, we're not ready for this flight. Okay. So there we go. We're not ready for this flight. So we can go back, company, go back to aircraft. Uh, I'm going to buy an older aircraft. Now, when you buy an older aircraft, it's just what it says. Uh, the aircraft is going to be, uh, the maintenance costs are going to cost a little bit more. It's going to burn a little more fuel. Uh, it's going to be a little more uh, difficult to maintain. And the uh, if you have random events on, there's going to be more random events. So there is a downside to paying half the price uh, for what this is. Uh, 737-7 would normally cost you $85 million. We're, you know We're at half that. So let's go ahead and buy it. Transaction completed. So it said, please refresh the page. We'll refresh the page. And there we go. $46 million in the hole. You see the aircraft location to be determined. So uh, what's going to happen now is when I try to start the flow, it's going to ask me if I want to relocate to the current location. Yes, it cost me $11,000. 11, so there we go. And now we're ready. Again, I, I you know, it's simple. Good afternoon, try, Captain. Try to be realistic, but simple. I thought Performing about... Performing safety checks and powering up aircraft. Please stand by. There's the verbose mode. Um, I thought about, you know, adding travel time. Okay, you can't use this aircraft for... But again, I want to try to find that line between giving you a little bit of realism, but also uh, understanding that a lot of people don't have time for a 45-minute pre-flight checklist. That's always been FSFO's um, strength if you will. So, okay. So now we're powering up the aircraft. And again, uh, so that is what, uh, one of the things that's not available, by the way, in the editor, the power up option, that is still a straight co-pilot power up aircraft. So I have it set to yes. If you can set that to no, you would be responsible for powering up the aircraft. And then the co-pilot would go ahead and um, do his actions once he detects that you have completed the, uh, the, the power up. So, and then, uh, well, again, I'll do another video um, down the road that explains uh, all the uh, options. I, again, wanted to create a much smaller um, footprint for FSFO so it doesn't open a second panel now. It tries to keep everything in nice, compact uh, form for you uh, on the on the side here. And again, you can even, if you want to even get more compact, you can do so. Still has full voice mode, um, still has every feature that the prior uh, the prior version had. I just hope that you find this one's a little uh, streamlined, a little easier to use. L look, the current version of FSFO, I implemented so many things that so many people wanted. I got it. It was getting a little bit complicated as far as, you know, what setting does what. So I wanted to kind of streamline it all as well as as well as update it to a new um a new .NET library, so it will be good for you know the future iterations of uh, of uh, Windows. Okay, here's uh, FSFO doing the uh, still doing the power up. Uh, these procedures do mimic Southwest. That's the uh, the stops that I copied for the default profile. So for those of you who don't want to edit the 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 flows and the checklist, I get it. It's all still right there for you using real life uh, uh, procedures and flows. Okay. Yep. Just going down through. Going to connect the GPU Set now. Set FLT deck lights. Set POSN lights. And there's the verbose mode. Attendant call test. And we can uh, we can go ahead and turn that off. I think you've got a a good idea of what that is. And now he's doing the configuration test on the throttles. Okay, 
So these tests again, um, it's again, the same option as it was in the prior iteration. It's because it's the first uh, no power equals system test. Yes, um, if this was set to no, regardless of what you have set in the editor, uh, it, he would not perform these uh, system tests because they're only required for the first flight of the day. And I can tell you the stall warning test does not uh, work right now. I've already got that on my uh, my list of things to, to go ahead and look at. Okay, and now we got the uh, light test. You should see all the uh, lights illuminate. There they go. And we're going to go ahead and set the uh, IRS selectors now. There they go. They're set the nav. And then the hydraulic pumps. Again, hydraulic pumps, uh, several uh, airlines have different uh, requirements for the hydraulic pumps. That's all set in the editor now. You can, you can choose to have them all off, all on, or just the electrical pumps on. Um, again, configurable within the, uh, within the editor. All right, so now uh, we're checking that we should be checking our IRS, but we're just gonna go ahead and assume it's right. Configuring the hydraulic pumps, and now he's going to configure the uh, the FMC. Okay, IRS is aligned. Go ahead and enter the uh, the flight plan that we had downloaded, and enter the uh, flight number. Again, this is all your first officer, just like the previous edition. Activates the flight plan. Heading out for my checks. All right, and now he's going to head out to his walk around. Again, configurable. You see it's 600 seconds. Well, uh, once again, in the editor, you go in and you go to uh, pre-flight flow uh, and you go down to the, the walk around uh, alphabetical order. Mm, Whoops, sorry, I didn't put the... Uh, you can actually even edit the amount of time uh, to walk around so if you only wanted it for three minutes you can do that by selecting 180 seconds um it's all right here it's all 100 percent editable uh, for maximum uh, realism okay the one thing fsfo still cannot do for right now uh it does not know what sids and sars you are so you still as the pilot in command are responsible for that and you'll have to excuse me i have not flown for months so uh Little, little rusty. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put the uh, the uh, flight plan in, and I think we're ready now. So let's go ahead and call him back. Aircraft is good, and again with the now the keyboard being uh, used, you can set any button to bot use as a bike pass command. It doesn't have to be Control Alt anymore. It's any button. All right, so there's FSFO loading the fuel. Essentially, within the editor, there are four uh, FMC options, and you can switch back and forth on whether or not you want the first officer, do it, or captain. The first is what we already saw, uh, setting the current aircraft position, loading the route. This is the second, as in the um, loading the performance data. The fuels, uh, excuse me, the second is loading the fuel and the payload. The third is the performance data, uh, which he is loading right now. And then the fourth is the uh, the approach configuration. It's broken up like that because if you want to do the performance data, you can do it. Just put it, remove it from the editor. Or if you want to do the route data, you can do that too. So that's the flexibility that, uh, that FSFO continues to offer. He's setting uh, the nav display mode. Again, all a value that you can set uh, within the editor. So if you don't want it set to 320, uh, you don't have to, you can just set a different value and that's what it will set it to. All right, seat belts are going on. Um, engine NDIs. Yep. See things going fast now because he's just checking, they're already set. The MCP, two set MCP has several different options. You can break it down. If you only want the pilot to uh, set the altitude and the his flight director, you can do that by setting a value of three. Uh, again, all explained within the editor. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. So just performing that GPWS test now. Sync rate. Pull up. 
And again, you can always uh, navigate to the home page and you can turn the stop the flow by just clicking the button again. Uh, again, just wanted to keep this uh, a little more streamlined so it, you know it wasn't occupying uh, a lot of your a lot of your screens. Okay, almost done with the uh, GPWS. And then he's going to go down here, and he'll program our HUD to our takeoff uh, runway. For those of you who want to use the HUD, you can see the actions are broken up in two phases. Uh, this is what the co-pilot is responsible for the flow. I'm only responsible for the brakes. I'll set them. So, you know, realistically, what should happen is uh, if the pilot flying is doing the, uh, if the co-pilot is doing all that, the pilot flying would be outside on the walk around. But I like the co-pilot to, to do the walk around. So it gives me time to go ahead and set the uh, departure and approach runways. At this time, I would just be uh, coordinating with um, bats and controls and other things. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that is the pre-flight flow. Uh, actually worked well. I haven't tested it in a while. So uh, let's go ahead and just go ahead and run the uh, the pre-flight checklist. Again, we're, we will be missing uh, at least one sound here. So pre-flight checklist, oxygen. Test it. Navigation, transfer, and display switches. Normal and auto. Window heat. On. Pressurization boat selector. Auto. Flight instruments. Set. Parking brake. On. Cut off. Checklist complete. Yeah. See, there's the fuel control switches. Need to re-record that. Again, they're all changed to the right naming configurations, and anything that's not being used would just be omitted. All right, so there is the pre-flight checklist. Uh, like, you know what? Uh, let's just keep going. Uh, again, I'm not in auto mode. I could set these so they're all automatic. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and let's just go do the perform start flow. Again, yeah, I've, I've configured so the uh, the co-pilot does all the work. All right, we're gonna switch now to APU power. And uh, by the way, the engine start sequence now also is a. Uh, you can edit that. So if you just want the uh, co-pilot to go ahead and manipulate the engine start selectors, but you introduce the fuel, you can do that or vice versa. If you just want the co-pilot to um, uh, manipulate these and, or excuse me, uh, you manipulate the, uh, the fuel and the co-pilot uh, does the, the engine start selectors. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want is, uh, is the, um, the point. So that gives you flexibility. I know there's people who have hardware and they have the, the fuel cutoff switches. They have hardware mapped to that and they want to use it, uh, but they don't have hardware mapped to the selectors. So that's the point of giving that type of flexibility. And then for some airlines, they actually have that stop. Okay, so here we go. Fuel pumps are coming on. Hydraulic pumps are coming on. The packs are coming off circulation fan and uh, we're going to disconnect ground power yes uh, FSFO still has the ability to uh, ops still has uh, I have GSX turned off right now I uh, haven't fully uh, tested it but um, uh, by the way uh, ground services uh, includes fuel now too so you can get fuel from GSX I won't just demonstrate that today, but it is in there. All right, so let's go ahead and run the before start checklist. Before start checklist, flight deck door. Dear passengers, this is closed and locked. That the Fuel one door is closed, zero six three seven departure. pounds. In order for Check us to passenger push sounds. Back, we would require um, that all MCP speed one zero zero heading two one four altitude all three zero 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 zero. zero Set. Take off speeds. V1, 1, 2, 8. V1, 1, 2, 8. V2, 1, 3, 0. Thank you. Check. CDU preflight. Completed. Free and zero. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Anti collision lights. On. Checklist complete. Okay, so uh, we saw uh, an error. Excuse me, I'm writing this down. Uh, 
again, did not give the correct um, speed when reading the, uh, the takeoff speeds or altitude. So I'm just making a note of that now. Uh, let's go ahead and play the departure briefing. I forgot to do that as well. Ready for the departure briefing? All right, it will be a left seat takeoff from Kilo, Bravo, Golf, Romeo, to Kilo, Bravo, Oscar, Sierra. Taxi route is per ATC instruction. We'll be departing on runway. One, five, climbing via the departure procedures to an initial altitude of 9,000 feet. Standard reject and emergency procedures apply. Any questions? Okay, so what's not in there because I haven't recorded the sounds that will actually give you the runway conditions now too. So um, I haven't recorded those sounds, so that's why it is not in there. All right, for those of you using SAPI uh, instead of the, the Kilo Bravo, it will uh, actually read the, uh, the airports now. All right, um, you know what? Let's go ahead and keep going a little bit. We're going to go ahead and back up uh, the... Pushback feature is a little bit different now. You can still do it via voice or via buttons or just automate it. Uh, what happens is I'm just going to tell uh, I wanted to um, push back. I thought, uh, let's go 100 feet. It's set to feet because that's the um, the measurement that I have my Microsoft Flight Simulator set to. So if you had it set uh, to kilograms, then it would automate. This would be meters. Uh, I want the tail direction to go right. Um, okay. And then let's go ahead and start the pushback using uh, default or using pre-coordinated uh, figures. Go ahead. We're ready for pushback. Connecting tug. I'll let you know when the pin is inserted. Okay, you see some figures down here. This is the direction the nose is currently pointing at, 149. Uh, this will be your tug speed, and that's the distance uh, you have to, uh, to push back. And again, really just trying to m minimize FSFO's footprint uh, on your screen. So a little bit different approach than uh, um, a whole second screen here. So now we're waiting for the, uh, the tug. And then I got a release. Steering my... inserted, release parking brake. Okay. Give me a minute. I cannot remember which uh, uh, key I have mapped for my parking brake. Okay, I'm uh, back. Apparently, it was um, <laughs> it's control plus uh, number delete. So let's go ahead and oh. all right. Uh, hmm. I don't. This is the problem with not having hardware set up. Uh, let me uh, let me try one more time. Okay, I got it. It was uh, right control plus period. Uh, I got to get Clear my to start engines. I have got to get my hardware uh, uh, hooked up. Uh, so we've been cleared to start engines. I have it configured, so uh, FSFO will uh, go ahead and uh, start the engines. Starting engine two without me doing anything. But again, you can configure it so you can either just do the engine start Nose selectors right. or do the uh, the the fuel or both. Okay. Now going to nose right. And again, he pushing the nose right once we hit Engine uh, two cut out. 100 feet. Uh, and now he will uh, go uh, nose right until he reaches the, the direction, the tail direction we, we set here. Stopping pushback. Okay. Pre set parking brakes. Set the parking brake. Tow bar disconnected. See you on the left side with the pin. There we go. So that's the Have push. Have a great flight. The kind of new pushback feature. We'll you on the left side with the pin. Thank you. And we'll go ahead and close that up. And then uh, all your uh, other um, services. Now, if you're in career mode, make sure uh, that you feed your passengers. Make sure uh, that you. Starting engine one. If it's safe to do so, uh, the seatbelt signs. Um, because that will be reflected in your company reputation if you never feed your passengers or you never uh, give them an opportunity to use bathrooms. And it's cumulative too. So if you're on an eight hour flight and you never turn off your seatbelt signs or you never feed your passengers, that's gonna reflect pretty uh, pretty poorly uh, on you. Again, I'll go over that more uh, in a different- um, And your one cutout. In a different video. The point was just to kind of uh, demonstrate the, uh, the abilities. 
Uh, also another, as you'll notice, another checklist, I now have takeoff checklist below the line is now added. So you would do this on your taxi out and then this when you were actually cleared for, uh, for takeoff. All engine stable. So, okay, so there we go. All engines are stabled. Um, look, another error here that should already be uh, zeroed out because it looks like the engines are within uh, point. So that's another note I'm gonna have to make, but okay. So as you can see, progressing uh, uh, very, very well uh, with FSFO. Um, hopefully I'll have this uh, available, uh, you know, for beta within a couple of weeks. I'm moving in the, uh, in the right direction. Uh, we'll definitely uh, push out more uh, videos uh, down the road uh, as I get ready to introduce more features, but uh, interested in your comments always interested in your feedback. What am I missing? If you're on Discord, I am going through the suggestion and trying to get as many implemented as I can, uh, but realize using this new concept, it does take me a lot longer to build an aircraft profile, but uh, worth the time if it's um, if it's something that, that a lot of people ask for. Uh, people ask me, what's the upgrade cost gonna be? It's gonna be free. So I, if anything, by now, I, I think you all realize uh, I'm not in this for the money, never been. But need to charge a little bit, otherwise uh, my wife doesn't appreciate uh, all the time I uh, I spend on this. Uh, but I do enjoy it. Uh, with that said, I think we'll we'll leave it here for now. Uh, definitely look forward to showcasing a little bit more down the road. Interested in your feedback, guys. Uh, as always, uh, thank you very much, and hope to talk to you soon. I'll see you guys later.